I clearly made a mistake putting that computer in his room. I allowed the computer to become too much of his life. My son had these online relationships going on that were completely invisible to me. When Ryan Halligan was in seventh grade, he told his father he was being bullied and asked him to teach him how to fight. Right after Christmas, we got into a routine. We would go down into the basement after dinner and we put on the red boxing gloves. And we had this conversation one night and said, now, Ryan, you know, you know how to fight. The last thing I want to see happen now is that you now start picking fights at school. Don't ever want to learn that you're now the bully. But I did say to him, I said, Ryan, if that kid or any of his friends ever lay a single finger on you, you've got my full permission to wail on him. After that, things got better. Ryan told his parents the bullying had stopped. But then, in October of 2003, he killed himself. You know, all I kept saying, asking myself was why? Why? You know, I kept crying, why, Ryan, why did you do this? Just days after Ryan's suicide, John turned on his son's computer, looking for answers. I started to say, okay, there has to be something here. At the time, I was concerned about what everybody was concerned about, predators and pedophiles, right? I mean, that was what the media was talking about. You heard the horror stories. I thought, oh, let me go log on to his AOL account. Let me see if Brian's friends will open up to me online. All these instant messages started popping up. You know, who are you? What are you doing? This isn't funny. Get off of Ryan's account. We just started talking about what I knew. People would say things to Ryan over the internet and at school. Like, you were such a loser and just really mean things. Over the summer, Ryan had become the victim of a vicious cyberbullying campaign. One boy had started a rumor that Ryan was gay. I didn't stick up for him at the time because I thought, you know, it was just that middle school bullying, it happens. But um, it was real and it really hurt him. You know, back in my day, if you're getting bullied, it ends at the schoolyard. You come home then, you have your safe haven. But not for Ryan. He came home and did what every other kid did. He went online, and then now the taunts got to continue at home as well. According to Ryan's friends, the tipping point came when a popular girl at school flirted with Ryan over instant messaging, only to humiliate him later by telling him it had all been a big joke. I guess the fun is like dropping the bomb, you know, oh, just kidding, and then that like crushed him. I mean, you wouldn't do that to someone's face, but online it's completely different. You can do whatever you want and no one can do anything. You're at your house, they're at their house. It's different. There's something about reading words. You read it over and over again and you start to believe it. The words make it real. One kid told me, you never know if it's your best friend or your worst enemy that's doing this because so much of it comes to you anonymously. So you never know who to trust. He discovered a folder on Ryan's computer containing a series of conversations between Ryan and a boy with a screen name he didn't recognize. The two of them were spending a lot of time exchanging information that they were finding online that had to do with suicide and death. And they found one website that taught you how to hang yourself. So it gave you how to, how to tie the noose. There was a website that um, Ryan and this boy visited and they commiserated on that you plug in your personality traits and what you like and dislike and then they, they spit out the best way you can commit suicide. The most chilling conversation was actually a very short one. Ryan started off saying, tonight's the night I think I'm going to do it. And the kid fired back, it's about blank in time. Two weeks later, in the early morning of October 7th, 2003, 
Ryan's sister found him hanging from a noose in his bathroom. I feel the computer, I can't blame the computer. The computer and the internet were not the cause of my son's suicide. But they helped, I believe they helped amplify and accelerate the hurt and the pain that he was trying to deal with that started in person in the real world.